Hey guys, real quick note. Um, if you feel you're comfortable with the procedure of this video and you can get the hang of it really quick, go ahead and you can skip probably 90% of it. It's just a walkthrough, a tutorial of uh, how to basically how to count and place. Um, it's really tedious. It's really long. I apologize for that, but I cut out. This, I cut this down from 18 minutes. So, you know, if you think you can build it after seeing got the kind of the process get going, go ahead and try it. Uh, I think the final part's probably the most important, which is coming up next. So, uh, thanks for watching. Whenever you're dealing with these boards, the from this side to this side, it's square. So it's 29 pegs across. You always want to start in the middle. Um, if you have any type of sprite that you know is going to fit on a 29 by 29 board because if you run off the edge you're going to get upset trust me I've done it a few times it's not fun so always start in the middle and ma make sure that your sprites going to actually fit um, sometimes if they're bigger designs what you want to do is find the flattest surface on each side and count them all the way across and if this is going to be uh, more than 29 it's not going to fit on one board so then, what you would want to do is simply take this little connector board, the other board, it's got a little slot in it, you line them up, and you just put them together. They just snap flat just like that. Now obviously the best way is going to do this is to have four boards, but if you're you know, worried about cost and you want to keep it under, if you want to keep it around 20 to 25 dollars to start with, then you're just going to do two boards. That's why you should also do um, small designs to begin with. And what you want to do is take your bead, it's just literally a bead, a little short bead, as you just want to place it on the board. There's one. Sometimes you will have trouble, they'll fall in between the spikes. There's two, there's three, there's four, five, Oop. and you also have to be careful too not to knock them over like I just did. So there's six right there. Congratulations, you've got your first line. Although it looks nothing like that now, I guarantee you just take your time and you'll be surprised how quickly this actually comes together. Also, when you're doing this, make sure you have enough light. If you don't, some of the bead colors actually do blend together and look a little bit the same. Um, from here, I'll just give you a I just give you a quick tutorial on how to do this now. This is where it gets a little tricky. This is the pegs on this picture are going to represent the same thing as your board. So by having these six here, what you want to do is now you have to count. There's a black one. Now there's one or two ways you can do it. You can count one space over and go down one, or you can start off with this black one and count one space down and go to the left one. Either way, you're going to get the same result. And you, because this is so symmetrical and so easy, you're going to do the same exact thing on both sides. You're going to count one down and one over on each side. You're going to place the two on that line. Then from the the furthest one, you're going to count one down, or one across, and one down. And then you're going to count one down, one over. And then from that one, you count down one, and count one over. A lot of the time with the 8-bit characters, they're going to have a black outline. I personally prefer to do it that way first. You can build from the inside out, but this way you know you'll have a border to work with and then you'll know that those are the spaces you have to fill in. So now just like on the uh, just like on the picture, I'm going to count down one from that black one, I'm going to count down one, and then one over. So count down one, one over. There's my next peg. And on the side, and now on that side, there's another one. Keep doing this. Now you can either keep going one way, or you can start on the other side. Either way, whatever you're more comfortable doing. Always do something you're comfortable with. Otherwise, it's not going to be as good. Or it's going to give you frustration. There's that peg. You're going to count down one, and then you're going to count one over. Okay, as you can see, I've got the uh, upper part of the mushroom done now. Now, I, I turned this back on just to give a piece of advice here. Don't let anything else around this um, area confuse you. Don't look at it. If you want to, you can uh, actually crop this piece out and then you can um, copy the image 
by itself that you cropped and paste it into a new paint so you don't get distracted by anything else. Uh, other than that, you know, if you're not confused by anything, you can work off the one page. Counting is very important. Patience and counting are probably the most two important things of this. Um, like I just shown, I got the outer line of the top part done. So what you want to do, the easiest thing I do is just count over to do the start the bottom. One, two, three. On the fourth one, you're going to put your next one to start down. It's very important that um, you know that if if the shape is symmetrical, you don't have to count both sides. But if it isn't, you need to start by counting the other side too. That's where I'm going to start my next one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very, very important. Like I said, patience and time. I can't stress that enough. If you don't have the time, you don't have the patience, this is why some people buy it. For the people who know they have the time and the patience and they can't understand why people don't make it themselves, then this is your type of deal. Um, if I can think of any other reasons why or why not to do this, I'll let you know. But go ahead and we'll finish that out and I'll be back here shortly. Alright, we got the mushroom done now. A few more pieces of advice. Um, obviously this is my first how-to, really, so I'm going to forget a few things, but... When you're putting the beads together, it, you know, you can see the mushroom now. It's there, it's visible. Don't be afraid of these little gaps. Um, it, it's going to look like it's not going to iron well together for the melting process, but everything else in the middle is going to fill up, so... If there's little gaps, don't worry. There's very, very few designs I've actually come across that have given me trouble because of gaps. Um, and like I said, in the end, it's going to fill up and they're going to fuse together fine. Now for the next part, the actual middle part, or the, the inside of the outline, always try and start with one color. Don't do both at the same time. Um, if you want to start with white first, start with white. If you're going to start with red, start with red. I recommend starting with white because it's the majority of the color you're going to need. So get your white pigs out and down here is very easy you just fill every spot here you just have to like again have to count start from that black peg right there count over one two three lay your three out and then count up one starting with the third one count up one two three and then from that third one one two three four as soon as you make that outline from either side count up one and then over one one always try to make sure you have an outline of something so basically you're making another outline within the outline of white of the color white um... now as soon as you got that outline done i'd go ahead just finish out the whites start from that black peg from your picture count over two fill it in you know fill them in as you go on this one, the easiest way to do is find the corner and just go straight up and count down from wherever it lines up. So from this second black one on the top row, count down one, two, then start your white. And then just start out your outline there. And from that one, first white peg, count over. That's the first peg, two, three, four. Count over five, but then go down one for your next white. Go down two, count down one and go to your left to start one two three four count over one and then start back up with one two after you've got down the first color completely there's no more counting it's then it's just the other color you put in the red and it's over alright guys I'm just finishing up my uh, red section another thing to bring up is make sure you have the appropriate color to finish your design um, otherwise you'll have to improvise like I did this is a uh, like dark reddish purplish color because I was out of red. And there you have it uh, with uh, oh, with uh, all, all best luck and with some hope and uh, some dedication you will get your first bead design done. And uh, because of the pegs it makes it look like it's 8-bit. Hope you're uh, sticking along with me. Um, Next part is uh, probably the hardest, for me anyways, is the ironing, uh, melting it together. See you then.